take another look at tonight's big earnings movers. Uh, Alphabet maintaining its gains. It is up now by about 8%. GM uh, is 1% gain there. Take a look at Gilead Sciences. That is down by almost 4%. And PayPal continues its slide after hours, down by more than 16%. Welcome back to Fast Money. Strong beginning to February stocks on a three-day win streak with all three major indices closing higher today. But our next guest is urging investors to brace for a messy market. Savita Subramanian is the head of U.S. equity and quantitative strategy at B of A Securities. Savita, it's always great to see you. Um, so Likewise. the 10% correction is, is likely behind us, but what do you mean by a messy market ahead? Look, I just don't think it's time to buy the S&P 500 wholesale. I don't think this is going to be a year where the S&P turns in great returns. And so just to set the stage, our target for the S&P this year is 4,600. It's a little bit higher than where we are today. But I think that between today and year end, we're going to hit that target multiple times and we're going to see some big swings in the market. And I kind of feel like this year is a year where we, we recalibrate expectations to an environment where cash yields are likely to move from zero, worthless today, to something closer to 2% by the end of the year. And this is our, our economist's latest rates forecast. So I think it's going to be a year where we are shocked by the volatility. We've already seen quite a, um, a volatile January. And what I think is interesting is that a lot of what we were forecasting came true in January. So now we're sitting here thinking, OK, now what? Um, t you know, tech took it on the chin. We thought that value would outperform growth. We saw the best month for value versus growth since the tech bubble. So now I think it's time to sift through all the rubble and look for good, high quality companies with free cash flow. And that would be my mantra for the year is just use volatility as a buying opportunity for high quality free cash flow yielders. Dave Edmonds would be happy about that as you go crawling through the wreckage. And I was going to say, you had this spot on because the last time you were on, you talked about all this taking place. So where does the Fed play into this? Because obviously, you know, the days of the Fed having our back are seemingly gone, at least in the short term. And, you know, a Fed that's been underwriting the broader market is no longer there. I agree. I mean, I think the idea that the, the Fed is going to act in response to market volatility is not necessarily the right framework today. I mean, the Fed's dual mandate, neither of those uh, those those metrics include the S&P 500. So I think we need to get used to the idea that, you know, asset inflation maybe is behind us and we're now heading for real inflation. So look, I think energy still works. From where I'm sitting, it's still very underweight. It still offers much higher free cash flow than say tips or, or other proxies for in inflation protection. And it's a, you know, it's a reviled sector. It still is one of the most underweighted sectors by, uh, by long only managers. So, I mean, I think it's interesting that even though it has doubled in its weight in the benchmark, nobody's really participated in that sector over the last 12 months. Um, I think that might be the pain trade this year, now that it could actually hurt to be underweight some of these inflation uh, uh, beneficiaries in the market. Savita, that your house call is for seven rate hikes this year, which is extremely aggressive. Is it hard to even say the S&P 500 will move even higher from here, given that forecast? I mean, that, that means all sorts of things for stocks in terms of you it know does. the cost of money and the dollar, et cetera. Absolutely. So I, I, this is why I think we're in for a volatile year. If Ethan Harris, our chief economist, is right, and we do see you know, seven rate hikes, I don't think the market is pricing that in. I think it could be really good for parts of the market. I mean, you know, the good news is that corporations and consumers are holding a lot more cash than they were back in 2008, 2009. So we all learned our lesson from the financial crisis, which is that leverage is evil. And it, this could actually be a better environment for some of the, the cash rich corporates. And by that, I would include some technology companies. I would include healthcare. I think financials is a, is a really unlevered and interesting high quality sector today. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think that this is going to be good for parts of the market. Unfortunately, what gets hurt are some of these longer duration growth stocks in an environment where discount rates are rising. And that's where right. I think the S&P might be in trouble because that's a bigger weight in the benchmark. All right, Savina, great to speak with you. Thanks so much. Savina Superman. Great to see you. B of A Securities. Uh, Karen Feinerman, that's great. Seven rate hikes if the yield curve actually steepens along with it.
Right. I mean, I guess you have to, seven rate hikes, that's certainly a lot, but you have to think about what she said, what is the environment in which they do those seven rate hikes, right? Because um, I don't know, I don't think the Fed is, in, is on autopilot like they were back in 2018. I do think they'll be pretty data dependent. Seems, it seems a little aggressive, but um, listen, we've been at zero. I feel like we're the, we're the uh, college kid that moved home and we expect the Fed to like cook for us clean and we don't have to do anything. Well, now the Fed's saying, yeah, look, I'm not doing everything anymore. You got to do something. So I'm okay with higher rates, but seven hikes, that's a little aggressive, I think.